The RTX 5090 is looking like an absolute monster of a graphics card. And I'm not just talking about performance, but we're looking at a 600 watt chugger, and yet we still might be dealing with a two slot cooler. Furthermore, the segmentation that Nvidia will be indulging into here will be quite aggressive compared to last gen. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. We've got some leaks coming from the infamous Copite 7 Kimi from Twitter surrounding Nvidia's upcoming RTX 50 series GPUs. Specifically, we've got some specs to go over for the RTX 5090 and 5080, which tells us shader configuration as well as what kind of memory these cards will come with. Along with that, I further inquired about cooler specifications as this was a topic we discussed recently on the channel and it turns out the 5090 will indeed have a two slot cooler cooler, despite a 600 watt TDP. Very interesting as this sort of lines up with what I talked to you guys about, but there's also some contradictions here that I would like to go over with you guys. So let's just jump right into the meat and potatoes of the material here and I'll just be using this table from Video Cards website as they have categorized the specs more coherently and will allow us to see a better comparison from the previous generation. I wanted to first focus on the RTX 5080 and honestly I'm quite concerned about this graphics card. So according to the leak it'll have 84 SMs resulting in 10,752 CUDA cores. That's about a mere 11% increase over the RTX 4080. It will still have the same amount of VRAM on a 256-bit bus, although it will be using the newer and faster GDDR7 memory, which of course will run at a faster transfer rate of 28 gigabits per second, resulting in 896 gigabytes of memory bandwidth. So that's about a 25% increase in memory bandwidth, which I suppose is a decent jump gen on gen. Then on top of that, we see they've increased the TDP from 320 watts to 400 watts. Now clock speed figures are unknown, though from the rumors I've heard and just looking at the increase in power figures, this generation of GPUs should have base clocks around 2.6 to 2.9 gigahertz and boost clocks around 3.2 to 3.4 gigahertz, maybe more. When comparing the specs of the 4080 to the 5080, it honestly doesn't appear to be that large of a jump. And if I'm to be honest, I'm skeptical about it even soundly beating an RTX 4090. Keep in mind, one thing we won't really know about until the product is on the market and tested is how much performance improves from architectural changes in IPC. We also don't know if the amount of cache these GPUs will have will be increased. Along with that, there was some information that Copite had shared with video cards earlier this month where they mentioned that the RTX 5080 was projected to show a 1.1x increase in performance over the 4090. That's a pretty vague statement though, and this could just be from some obscure synthetic benchmark that favors the Blackwell architecture or that the 5080 could have been using a new AI performance enhancing technology that the 40 series just doesn't have. That's right, you can bet that the 50 series will probably have some new exclusive feature that the 40 series is quote unquote incapable of doing and allowing them to artificially increase leads or close gaps. But let's circle back a bit. So we're looking at an 11% increase in shaders, 25% increase in memory bandwidth, and let's just assume about a 15% higher clock. Then I suppose the 5080 could be trading blows with the 4090. I'm not expecting it to stop the 4090, especially not when it has significantly less SMs and the same memory bandwidth as a 4080. Personally, I think they should have bumped up the memory bus to a 320-bit bus and given it at least 20 gigabytes of VRAM. While I think 16 gigabytes will be fine for the time being until this generation remains relevant, just having that extra bit of VRAM would have made the cards so much more appealing. It's just disappointing because they're also being so stingy with VRAM, but hey, planned obsolescence, am I right? To be fair though, we're also dealing with the new G7 memory, which is going to be expensive for sure. Plus, these leaked specs basically confirm what we've been talking Talking about on the channel this past year. How Nvidia will be indulging hard into segmenting their true enthusiast class card from a regular high-end model. What I think also contributed to that was AMD pulling out of the high-end. However, I want to be clear that I doubt it played a huge role anyways because Nvidia already owned such a large portion of the market where they weren't concerning themselves about what their competitors were doing. But once they learned that there was truly zero competition, it gives them free reign to do whatever. So if the 5090 will be 25 hundred dollars tough luck not like you had any other alternative i said this before and i'm gonna say it again here the 50 series really is reminding me of what happened during the 20 series 
AMD was absent from the high end, and then we had the 2080 that traded blows with the previous gen flagship 1080 Ti, and the new flagship 2080 Ti got a price hike and was the one that really only offered a substantial increase from the previous generation. So it sounds like that, but a lot more profound. So speaking of the 5090, let's take a look at its specs and compare it to the 4090. The RTX 5090, according to Copite, will have an SM count of 170, resulting in a whopping 21,760 CUDA cores. So that's a 33% jump in shaders, much larger than what we saw with the 80 class. Then on top of that, we get a larger memory buffer, 32 gigabytes of the new G7 memory on a fatter and meatier 512-bit bus. When was the last time you guys saw a 512-bit bus on a GPU? So that will result in a massive 78% increase in memory bandwidth. If you aren't going to be gaming at 4K or higher, you'd essentially be throwing this GPU's potential in the trash. I can see a lot of gamers who game at 4K and beyond or on those super wide screens will be very interested in a GPU like this. As for power, here's where things get really heated. So we're looking at an increase in the default TGP to 600 watts from 450 watts. Either this figure is highly exaggerated or it's because the clock speeds will be pushed balls to the wall. Regardless, given these specs, the 5090 will be an absolute monster of a GPU, and regardless of its price, I expect it's going to be sold out and hard to find just like the 4090 was. And keep in mind, with specs like these, it's not just going to be gamers buying the graphics card. It's going to be people who are looking into doing AI and machine learning who are probably salivating with specs like these. If I was to speculate on how much faster it'll be in terms of raw rasterization performance, then I'd say probably around 60% faster on average compared to a 4090. And as overkill as that may seem to some of you guys, there's been a number of titles which have shown to actually bring a 4090 down to its knees even without full path tracing enabled. But at this stage, given how much of a grasp NVIDIA even has on game devs, the new gimmick and AI performance features that will be unveiled alongside the 50 series will no doubt be showcased in a number of upcoming popular games or established games, and that'll make a lot of people go, oh wow, I definitely want a 5090 now. The 4090, I just can't compete with that anymore. They're going to have to do it, considering the bar was set quite high already from the 4090. Plus, people are a lot more accepting of tech like upscaling and frame generation now, where they won't even run their games without them enabled, whereas before when people saw frame generation, they're like, ew, fake frames, I don't ever want to enable that. Do take note here though just how much better of a leap this newer gen 90 class is going to be compared to what the 80 class gets. The 5080 has less than half less than half the CUDA cores compared to the 5090. And I think it comes down to NVIDIA realizing why bother with upsell tactics when we can just create a whole nother Teague that's in a league of its own, and then whoever can't buy that, they will just get a 5080. Whereas last gen, if you were buying a 4080 for $1,200 plus, most consumers were in that sort of category where they thought, you know what, I might as well just jump up to the $1,600 4090. We'll talk more about pricing in a moment. Circling back to the specs, I wanted to touch upon the power figures here, because with a TGP of 600 watts, that's going to take one hefty cooler to keep those temps in check. Like the cooler on the 4090 and the partner models were already so big, and you gotta think, what's the next step going to be? Well, I further inquired about this because earlier this year, Copite had said the 5090 would have a two-slot cooler, and that's what prompted me to make my last video where I decided to take on a more positive hopium approach. I figured, hey, since NVIDIA Nvidia doesn't even need to try as hard this gen, maybe they'll take the efficiency route and not push the silicon so hard from the factory this time around. I showed in that previous video just how poorly the 4090 was mismanaged with power configurations because it could maintain that same stock performance at like 100 watts less, if not more. Well, Copite told me that despite listing a 600 watt TGP, the cooler NVIDIA will use is still going to be a two slot cooler. Now, either NVIDIA has had a major breakthrough in thermodynamics and their next gen air coolers will be extremely efficient or they're going to be utilizing a hybrid cooler. With the way NVIDIA approaches problems with with such unorthodox solutions, I doubt they're going to be showing us a reference model with a typical AIO sticking out of it. But what I think they will be doing is 
something similar to what we saw MSI showcase at Computex in 2023, where instead of having a large aluminum heatsink, why not just stick the radiator to the GPU and throw on a shroud? So you'd essentially have a liquid cooled GPU in a much more smaller footprint. I suspect that the 5090 reference model could be built in a similar manner. To me, it seems like the only plausible way they can achieve having a two slot model for a 600 watt TDP card. The one thing I don't like though about this approach is that having a liquid cool GPU just means more parts for failure and two, it, it brings up longevity concerns. Now, let's come back to pricing, and this is all just speculation. I really wanted to give you guys some hopium in that last video and kind of take things from a very optimistic approach rather than the whole, you know, usual doom and gloom and, oh, everything's too expensive approach. But given these specs that we're seeing here, it is... Uh, painfully obvious that with the 5090, NVIDIA will once again be ascending to a new level of pricing. $24.99 for the 5090, and I'd be surprised if it was less than that. And for those that can't afford it, no worries, there's a 5080 at $1,500. 10% faster than the 4090 in select benchmarks, plus you get the new gimmick. Take it or leave it. Following that, given how much prices will have increased on those high-end GPUs, where do you guys think that the mid-range will be, and the entry level will start at? Are we going to get an RTX 5070 at $1,000 and then an RTX 5060 with a dinky little 128-bit bus for $600? I really hope not. Me personally, I'm really hoping for a last minute change like what happened with the 4090 as we had initially heard that too was going to be a 600 watt TGP card, but got changed to a 450 watt card. But regardless, the pricing is what's going to be putting people's bank accounts on alert. So in a nutshell, the 50 series will basically be don't be poor and get the 5090. Otherwise, get the F out. We'll touch base in the next video. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.